Hey everyone, I thought I'm going to give you a little overview how you can use the firmware switching features that I recently built uh, for the Agon. Um, what you see here currently on the screen is the standard uh, release of uh, both the VDP and the MOS uh, version for Agon. Both are version 104. And what I've done is I actually went uh, to uh, my GitHub uh, uh, page where you can actually download the complete zip file of the full contents. What I've then done is I put that on a uh, SD card, which I put in here in the uh, beautiful Agon Console 8. I also have another one, by the way, which is uh, this one, probably featured a couple of times in uh, the other things, the uh, Agon Light uh, 2. Um, but this is a beautiful Agon uh, Console 8, uh, which also features the joystick ports which I use with uh, the games that I have ported over. But first things first, let's give you an impression on how you're actually going to uh, yeah, make it switchable. Uh, the intent here is the following. What I want to do is that the base OS, uh, which is actually has two parts, uh, one running on the ESP32, which is the VDP, the other part is running on the EZ80, which is MOS, and I want them both running on Quark. Uh, Quark is a stable release uh, that is fully supported by the community, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of development happening there. And I don't want to miss out on that, so uh, of course uh, I would like to uh, have that as well. But on top of that, I've created my own operating system, and I did it actually because I just yeah, I like to tinker with all these uh, hardcore features, uh, low-level stuff. I wanted just to see if I can also pull it off to, to make my own uh, yeah, VDP type of implementation, which I call the Electron Hardware Extraction Abstraction Layer, or, or HAL. And I made my own underlying operating system, and I call it Electron OS. So you have Electron HAL and Electron OS. Anyway, um, but what I want to do is to be able to switch between back and forth between both of, both of them so that I can enjoy actually everything that's happening on Quark and you can then also, uh, like, like me, enjoy everything that's happening on Electron and sometimes maybe some features get ported over from Electron back to Quark like for example the ZDI interface uh, which enables you to program things without an expensive cable or even debug uh, software which I do a lot um, uh, yeah, without actually using the, uh, the Zylo cables. Anyway, let's go back to the switcher. The first thing you need to do is the following. I created a directory called firmware, which is here. And here you see a couple of files. Um, you have here the typical MOS files, uh, of the uh, Quark uh, files and the uh, Electron files I put in here as well. And um, I have here put in the standard directory, which is the MOS directory. I put uh, flash.bin, which is actually Jeroen Venema's uh, flasher uh, utility, but I changed it a little bit. If you do that, as you can see here, it has a couple of additional commands. Um, you have the usual commands, uh, flash MOS file name flashes, flashes a new uh, MOS version flash VDP file name flashes a new ESP32 uh, firmware. And now we have two new ones called VDP switch and MOS switch. And I'm actually employing a feature that we, we probably don't know of, but every time you new flash a new VDP, it's actually stacked behind the other one that was previously before it. So both are from that moment on in the memory of the ESP32, and you can switch between them. And I implemented something similar for M MOS. Now let's see how that works. So I'm, I'm still here in, um, I'm going to reset just to see if we're going to stable state. You see we're on uh, a cork, and I'm going to the firmware directory if it finally updates my screen. Yeah, it does. So here I have the firmware. So I'm currently running VDP version 104. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to install, install uh, Electron Hall uh, 0.8.1 pin bin. 
uh, to it. So the command for that is flash VDP agon electron hull 0.8.1. And then you just follow the instructions. It first calculates a check number, a very big number, a COC number, so that after flashing it can check if that uh, is still intact. So uh, do I want to flash it? Yes, I want. And it's actually pushing things over from, actually we're running on MOS, so it's actually sending it over from MOS to the ESP32. And there is now being received and it's shown with the little dots that you see there. And it's done and it's rebooting. Okay, so after resetting you see the following. It has uh, put the electron hall version 0.8.1 in the ESP32 memory. Um, and then you see uh, a couple of extra lines. You see that Quark MOS 104 is still running in the MOS uh, on the, on the, the EZ80. Uh, but the MOS personality has been activated. Now, we'll talk about personalities a little bit later, but it actually shows you have now a new yeah, VDP, if you like, running on the ESP32, and still the old MOS in uh, the EZ80. So, let, let me show you what you can now do next. Um, you could, of course, now go ahead and flash the new uh, uh, yeah, combined MOS EOS uh, version, but what I'm first going to do is something else. I'm going to do flash VDP switch. And what this does, it actually will switch the previous ESP32 uh, yeah, kind of, uh, yeah, the, it's, it will f switch back to the VDP where it's now was running electron hull. Let's see if that works. Switching VDP. And when my screen finally refreshes, you'll see I'm in Agon Quark VDP 104 again. And I can flash again, VDP switch. Boom, I will probably will see it will go back to the blue screen that you saw first. And that's not the Windows blue screen, but it's more the, the signature screen that I use for Electron Hall. I just like the color. So that is uh, the first step done. I can, I can switch between two ESP32 firmwares. Let's now go back to the firmware directory. Oh, I'm already in there, of course. Uh, so I'm now going to flash MOS, and now I'm going to flash what I call a combined firmware. So this is the combined MOS EOS, which is Electron OS 0.8.1. I could of course make this file name shorter, but I made it uh, very long just to show you what version is in there. So it's still MOS 104 and EOS 0.8. Uh, 0 0.081 in one package. Now, same story here. Calculates the CFC. I want to flash it. It's going to read it. And it's actually going to flash it into the easy 80 memory. And it's the flash memory. So after reboot, it will retain this. So it's done. And now you would think like, yeah, but what is now different then? Because if you if you if you look here, we're still in uh, Quark MOS, correct? I'm going to reboot, reset. And you see, it goes to the the blue electron hall screen, and it shows the MOS personalities activated, and nothing has changed. But I can switch between uh, MOS versions now, or in this case, between MOS and EOS. So let's do this with a flash MOS switch. And again, you don't need to really reflash anything. It's just very rapidly, boom, we're in the Electron OS. Uh, uh, and here you can now do Electron OS stuff. Uh, and what cool stuff you can do here? Well, you can, uh, you can run CPM and it activates the CPM personality. I can uh, go here, I can, what is it, mBasic, I guess? Yes, Microsoft Basic. So I'm in the Microsoft Basic version of uh, 
print hello. So what I also can do, and I am actually in between, I'm now uh, resetting because once it is in the, in the personality, uh, yeah, it is there. So every time I reset now, it goes back to the MOS version. So again, flash MOS switch, and boom, I'm back in Electron. And now I can, for example, do something else. I was just in the CPM personality. I'm now going to start something in the MSX personality. So open kingsvalley.bat, uh, bat, which is a batch file. And it will actually start the MSX emulation it is. It is not a full-fledged MSX, but it is enough to run Kings Valley. And uh, here we are. As you can see here, as featured in, in previous other videos. I'll actually make the sound a little bit louder. And I'll hear it. And I can play it if I want. Now let's not do that too long because I actually like programming more than, uh, than gaming. So I'm going to reset here again. And uh, I go back to this screen. I say, yeah. I'll switch. And by the way, on my other uh, add-on, I actually put in a uh, an auto exec.txt to continuously go to Electron OS because most of my development is happening in Electron OS. So I can continue to work there. Okay, so uh, King's Valley. Um, let's see what batch files are there more. Uh, no, that, that does not work with, uh, with wildcards yet. Doesn't matter. Um, I'm not going to do GR Kung Fu, but let's also have a look at what is actually in such a batch file. If you see here, you see a series of commands. You can actually type them in all by yourself, but uh, yeah, who likes typing? It actually does in Electron OS an init, which actually initializes a personality. In this case, it, after doing it, it's kind of a, in a virgin state. It loads the MSX BIOS, and then it loads the MSX GR Kung Fu binary, which is a little bit changed, so that uh, uh, yeah, actually all the input output that goes to the um, yeah the video chip initially in the MSX is actually going to be rerouted back to the ESP32. Similarly, is happening with the audio chip, the PSG. Um, then it puts VSync on, which is the only tells it to reroutes interrupts uh, to the MSX. So that you get the, the standard pacing, so that every 60 seconds of one sixtieth of a second, it will get another interrupt, uh, and that Jir Kung Fu uses that to update the screen in a certain uh, manner. Or usually, it's an audio play routine, uh, for example. And then it does run. So let's do open gr2 batch file, and then it goes to Jir Kung Fu. So here we are. And I can play this as well. Let's see if I can kill this boss. That's not going so well. There we are. Anyway, it gives you an impression what you can do. So these are both uh, games in the uh, MSX personality. Again, it has a limited BIOS of the MSX. It's not emulating everything yet, but good enough to play games. So, flash MOS switch again. So I'm going back to uh, Electron OS again. And I'm going to show you the last thing I actually just made. I, I made um, uh, a port of actually made an additional personality for the Sega uh, 1000, which actually was the first Sega console uh, that they ever made. And interestingly, it was based on the Z80 processor. Uh, it had the same VDP as the MSX uh, one, so that was cool. I had that already figured out. Uh, only the thing was, of course, sitting on a different port number. Um, 
No, I actually made that configurable now in the system. So it actually listens to VDP requests on multiple ports so that it can actually, uh, uh, yeah, uh, it sees actually the request from the Sega 1000. Um, different to the Sega 1000 was that it had a different uh, PSG, a programmable sound generator, uh, than the MSX. But it was yeah, quite similar actually. So I actually just copy pasted uh, uh, the code I had for the uh, MSX PSG made some tweaks and I had the Sega version running. So this is the result of that. Um, I found a super cool game of the Sega uh, 1000. It's called Gulkav. I don't know how you pronounce it really. It was never released here in Europe, but in, in Japan. It was actually pretty cool. And here, when you start it, it activates the ST1000 uh, personality and it just starts it. And um, yeah, it's actually pretty cool because for this time, and we're talking about uh, 86, uh, in a quite limited console, uh, this thing even has yeah, some sort of uh, uh, parallax scrolling. And actually quite com complicated uh, uh, patterns of the sprites. They flash only an awful lot. That's, uh, that's the only problem here. The, the guys who programmed it actually later went out to program uh, more shooters but then they choose to, to actually have them top down uh, because then you have less problems with the sprites uh, because uh, if you have more than four sprites on, the, on a line then usually you get this flashing anyway you get the idea so here it is um, we have uh, now on the Agon console 8 the ability to go to actually boot two types of uh, ESP32 uh, firmwares. I can switch between them with VDP switch. As you can see here, and you can switch MOS versions with MOS switch. Uh, just uh, one thing uh, yeah, to, to take note, um, Electron OS uh, yeah, does not work uh, very good on uh, the Quark VDP. You get all kinds of weird uh, characters on the screen, so I would not recommend to do that. Um, alternatively, uh, uh, MOS does work with Electron Hall, of course somewhat limited. Some more advanced features of uh, Quark VDP are not implemented, again because it's a completely different hardware abstraction layer that I built. And it, it has a couple of the same features, but most of the other features are the, yeah, the, the virtual uh, uh, video chips, the virtual audio chips, different screen modes uh, that are in there, uh, screen modes that are compatible with the Sega and the MSX. Uh, they are not found, of course, uh, on the normal Agon Quark VDP. But anyway, I have it now all running in one package and I can very quickly switch back and forth. This is also the recipe for other people. If you have, let's say, an experimental version of the Quark VDP and you just want to try it out next to the stable one, just use the, this same flash program. You can just then uh, switch in between them as well. Uh, there's only a maximum of two. So it's only one is active and the other one is not, and then vice versa. And with MOS, yeah, you can, of course, prepare such a firmware, which I did, which has a combined MOS EUS firmware. Yeah, for programmers, yeah, you need to know what you're doing, but it's quite easy to figure out. Um, and I will actually start to document that process also in a, in a separate uh, video, how you do that. And then you actually have a combined image where you can also use the MOS switch function to switch in between those. Anyway, this is uh, my update uh, for today. Hope you enjoy it and uh, happy Electron.